What up, I'm Devin on deck, and today I'm teaching you exactly how I make my cinema graphs, okay? We're talking cinema, as in video, and graph, as in photograph, all right? Moving images. Start the intro. Um, Welcome back to Devin on Tech, where I give you how-tos and reviews. Now, this is a video I've been wanting to make for y'all for a while now. I think I've been doing cinema graphs for almost a year now, but I wanted to make sure I mastered it first. So remember, this is something that goes on top of everything that I've taught you before. So you've already gone over how to take better photos, okay? If you haven't seen that video, I will link it above and below. We also have already gone over how I edit my photos, okay? And how I color things, what my principles are, all right? We talked about that. I will also link that below. And third, we've had creative talk where you can get ideas, concepts, how you can make things your own, get inspiration. Because from this, I don't want you to necessarily create my style. I don't want to create another me. I want to inspire you to become the best and most creative you and give you all the tools you need to be great. But before we start, before we get into this, if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, please do. I'm an anime tech nerd meets style guy, which basically means I have an imagination of a child, yet I can curate at an editorial level. So you're gonna see a great mix of imaginative content, yet it's gonna be very stylized and clean and serious. So if that sounds good to you, you are in the right place. Now if you have already subscribed to my channel, make sure you hit that bell icon so you get a notification every time I post a video. Now, if you follow me on Instagram, you know a few days ago I posted a video of me and my friend Claire in London at Gleamfest. We're in a grassy area, grassy knoll, and we have a giant Ferris wheel rotating behind us endlessly in a perfect loop for you all to enjoy. So since it's the most current video that I have up, I thought I'd just walk you through this one. Now, if you're a new subscriber or a new follower, then you might not have scrolled far enough down on my Instagram to see that I've done way crazier videos than this. I'm talking shoot floats, making myself fly, Dragon Ball Z fight scenes with my friends. So really, this video that I'm teaching you today is actually entry level, a foundation that we can then later build off of, okay? So I planned everything out for you. I got like three more videos after this, but today I'm gonna teach you how to make a basic entry level cinema graph. Okay, so first things first. What I'm teaching you today is intended for the Instagram platform, all right? So that means either going to be a vertical video or a square video. If you have a DSLR camera or a small point and shoot, you wanna shoot it this way, all right? Turn your camera to the side, or if you're using your cell phone, just you know, shoot it this way. Secondly, you wanna make sure you use some type of tripod or mount so that the shot is completely still. It cannot move at all if you want it to work properly. So now let me walk you through the process. First, I set up my shot of the background. I just wanted to see compositionally exactly where I wanted the Ferris wheel to be. And for this particular shot, I wanted to make sure that the Ferris wheel at least did one full rotation before we continue with the next part. And after I got sufficient amount of video, that's when I had Claire step into the frame. But then I step into the frame and we kind of just stood there. We tried a few different poses out, kind of stood around a little bit, about maybe a minute, minute 30 seconds of filming and that's it. So now we take it over to Photoshop and it's time to edit this thing so it comes out as a perfect cinema graph. Okay, so when you open up your video in Photoshop, you should see this timeline come up down here. Now if it doesn't come up, go to Window and then come down to Timeline. Click that and this will come up. If you shot this on your iPhone or your phone, then it should come out vertical. If not, then you can just rotate it. So we're gonna go to Image, Rotate, Counterclockwise, Bam! All right, back up a little bit. So next, you wanna make sure you crop this to Instagram size. So you hit the C on your keyboard and you're gonna get the crop tool. It's gonna look like this. And make sure your ratio is four by five, my friend. Bam. So you wanna move it around to where you're happy with it and then hit the Enter key on the keyboard to finalize it, all right? And then image size, we're gonna make this much smaller gonna make the width 800 height 1000 make sure to follow my settings here next you're gonna ungroup this layer right click ungroup layers and now you are free as a bird this slider zooms in and out of the clip if I zoom out I can skip all the way to the end in one swoop okay so you want to skip to the part of the video where you have your poses and you want to find a pose you're happy with so this is us walking around testing stuff out Boom, okay, there we have it. So after you find the pose you like, you wanna make this into a still image. And the way that I do that 
is by selecting all, so I'm gonna go Command A, then I'm going to Command C, and then Command V to copy it right there. So now you're looking at this top layer, which is a still image as opposed to a moving video. And to make sure you always know the difference, you can make this just say image, and then make this layer video. So now you always know. And another way to test it out too, you can drag it along the timeline, and you'll see now that nothing is moving, right? But see the little eyeball right here? That affects the visibility. Take the visibility away, and now all you're seeing is the video layer. You see what I'm saying? These are layers, ladies and gentlemen. So, boom. Image, video, image, video. You got me, cool. Next step, you want to cut out your figures, cut out your subject, cut out your people. The way I cut things out is the pen tool, as you know. So you can select it here or hit the P key on your keyboard. The pen tool takes a little bit getting used to, but it is the most precise tool, in my opinion, for cutting stuff out and compositing. So here we go. Obviously you wanna cut out your entire body, but I'm just gonna use my hat right here. So here we go. And actually we can speed this up a little bit so that you don't have to wait for me to do it. Boom, so now that you have it fully selected, what you wanna do is right click and you want to make selection, all right? Copy my settings here, press enter. And then what you want to do is hit the L key for the lasso tool, right click on it, and then layer via cut. Bam, so now you wanna hit the V key on your keyboard to then select the move tool and you can grab this and move it around anywhere you want to. So obviously you wanna do this with your entire body, with your entire subjects, whoever's in the front. And since I do have the final version over here, I'm gonna take this and drop it up in there so we don't have to use it. Deleting that, deleting that, putting the final one with me and Claire in the thing, you feel me? Let me stretch it out. Uh. Uh. So now we wanna to go to the part of the video where just the background is, right? Obviously you don't want you overlapping yourself. That's where we're gonna go. So I'm gonna pick the best part in my opinion, which is gonna be probably about here. Yeah, there we go. From about here to maybe here. That sounds good, excellent. Visibility gone, so we can just focus on this background. I'm gonna then trim it down with these little gray tabs. These create your work area, okay? So you wanna trim it down to a happy place, take this marker and drag it all the way to the one end. And if you want to snap to that, like mean stick to it, hold down shift, it'll stick to it easier. Make sure you click on the video layer only, and then hit these scissors to clip it. Bam, all right? So like that, hit delete on your keyboard. Do the same thing on the other side. Bam, mm. click the video layer only, boom. Delete the rest, because now you already have your pose, so you don't need the part where you were in the frame. All you need is the background. And then what we're gonna do is move everything back to the beginning. That's what I like to do to just keep, keep it simple. Yep, there, boom. Then we can drag this back down. Bam, and make it the same size. Okay, so here you are. You're looking at the background footage, cropped exactly how you like. You have the subjects in the foreground and you wanna test it out and press play right here. Now, if your playback's a little choppy, you can always adjust it here at the gear and your resolution, you can change it and the playback will be a little bit faster, but it won't be as clear, okay? So if you wanna use a little more patience, you can go 150, but 25 would be the fastest playback for you. Also, make sure the loop playback button is there. And you'll see a loop infinitely, okay? So let's look at it and see what we get. There we go, looks good to me. So next let's go to color correction, all right? So you can change your video's color by hitting this button right here. That's gonna be your adjustment layer, or I like to call it like a filter. So you wanna make this adjustment layer hue saturation. That's gonna affect the color. And then you wanna drag this layer over video only. You don't wanna affect the photo, all right? So keep that hue saturation right there and then the properties are going to affect it. So. You can literally pick whatever color you want and adjust it. So I'm gonna get the reds, reds down. I see a little more pink in there, that's gonna be magenta. Take that down too, bam. 
and I think the yellows are too strong. You know, Devin doesn't do a lot of color in his background. So we're gonna take that yellow down too. Make it make it a little more greenish. We're gonna go to the greens. Take that bad boy down as well. You see what I'm saying? You know how I do. So I'm gonna keep the color subtle, all right? Take them down. You wanna make this to your preference, to how you like your images and videos to look. But boom, that was it. Quick, adjustment, done. Now it's time to make this bad boy loop, all right? Now for this particular situation, this background object, this Ferris wheel, obviously is stationary, rotating in the same spot. So it's gonna be way simpler to make this into a perfect loop. And this is probably the first perfect loop I've ever done because I have this particular situation. But if you're looking at a waterfall, car traffic, wind blowing or something like that, it's almost impossible to make it happen. So just find a sweet spot for yourself to blend the layers to make a smooth one. So I'm gonna teach you that. So what you wanna do is duplicate the video layer, all right? Just drag this right here, bam. So now you have two, and actually we'll make the timeline a little bigger so you can see them all together. Now let's take this top video layer, you want to put a fade on it. So usually I go about 0.5, maybe 0.25 on my fade. Take that right there. Bam, all right? And what we're gonna do is zoom in, drag it over, drag it over, excellent. So it's about a half a second of fading you see. Now what you wanna do is take this bottom one, drag it back to that same spot, all right? Put your marker there and it'll stick to the marker without you having to do anything else. But now we're gonna take this one back to the very beginning. Take it back. Take it back, take it back. There it is. We wanna make sure this lines up perfectly with the beginning of that clip. We've now taken the end of this clip off and looped it back to the beginning of this clip and making it fade out at the very beginning. Now if you notice though, at the end, we have a little problem here with this being blank in the background. So easy way to do it, it just, Pull it back and it's, it'll snap for you too, just to make sure it matches up. And there you go. So now your work area is matching how it's supposed to, all right? Don't forget to do that because otherwise you're gonna look foo-foo and sloppy at the end. You don't want the blankness. You just want it to end like this, all right? You don't want a blank background. So let's test the loop and see how it looks. Bam, all right? Now that was really quick, so I'm gonna take it back for you. So if you look, there's about half a second here of this opacity of this top layer going out till it blends into the next one. Now you can do the opposite. If you don't want it to blend at the very beginning, you can make it blend at the very end if you like to. And do the opposite on that side. Test it out and see what you like. But that's basically the simplest way you're gonna find one. And with this one, it does look particularly ugly. Now that I'm looking at it, I get it. It does look choppy with this particular thing. But again, this is the only time where I feel like you need to do a perfect loop, but in other situations you don't. Like for instance, this one I did in London, super simple loop that I did, and it wasn't as ugly looking because of the situation. So you gotta judge it. You gotta find a sweet spot for yourself in your situation, but I believe you can do that. But now we gotta export it. So. Hit this little arrow down here. You wanna name your file, select where you want it to go, and then you wanna play around with the quality and make sure you get the lowest file size but the, the best resolution you want, right? So here are the parameters I would give you. I would go medium quality at the lowest. The smallest size I would do would be 600 width, 750 height. The lowest frame rate I will do is 30, and that's about it. It's probably the lowest I will go. But again, you gotta test out for your preferences, but this is it. Then from here, you can go higher. And just make sure that your files, I would say 20 megabytes and lower. And from there, you should be fine. And then after you pick that, render, you export it, and there you go. Boom! So there you have it. Now you know exactly how I make my cinema graphs, and now you are empowered to make your own. Now, team on deck, I already know what I'm gonna say next. Once you get this down and you make your own, send it to me. I wanna see them, okay? I don't care if you tweet it to me, email it, DM it to me on Instagram. However you wanna get it to me, get it to me. I want to see it, I want to applaud you, I want to post it to the world so they all see your work. And of course, if you have any questions, feedback, reactions, leave them in the comments. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure you give your man a thumbs up. And last but not least, I mean, if you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, then please do. I appreciate your time as always, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.